Welcome to worship today. We're glad that you're with us on this day that God has given us, those who are here and those who are joining us online. Just a lot of announcements to alert you to this morning. Please uh, pay attention on the screen as well as a few I want to highlight today. Uh, the altar flowers are given by Vicki Kirsch in memory of Henry and Iola Berg. And also we have a baptism today, so Riley Ann Martin will be joining our church today in holy baptism. We are seeking a choir accompaniment, so if you have that skill, uh, that would involve Thursday practice and Sunday morning the choir singing, so let Julie or, uh, Judy or Kirk know if you're interested in that. At the back, the new directories are in. They are in alphabetical order, in theory, with your name and your, a sticker on it, so please take one for your family, and that keeps us our costs down, and so we don't have to order a bunch of extra, but please pick those up today. Our Bible study is beginning. Also, Oktoberfest is coming up on October 15th. Uh, the menu for that looks incredible. That is a mission event. Uh, the money for that goes to support a ministry in Tanzania uh, that the Kogelmans are part of. So please sign up for that. It's going to be good. There's lots of good food and lots of good desserts uh, that will be made for us. <coughs> Before we do the blessing of the Bibles, uh, Cindy has asked for a moment. Where is Cindy? There she is. <laughs> section up front now so I'm moving up in the world next week um, October 2nd is our special uh, congregational meeting uh, to vote to give Pastor Ted a permanent call so yes so we want to make sure everybody gets a chance to vote it has to be a paper vote um, so when, if you come on next Sunday, you can, we'll use paper vote, but if you can't make it, um, you still can vote. So starting tomorrow, if you're able, um, and you're not gonna be here next week, you can come in and Kim can give you a ballot and you can vote that way. Um, all the votes, so all week you can come in, whenever you can come in. If you can't make it in, um, and this is for our people out there, uh, online. If you can't make it in, let Kim know and I'll make sure that you get a ballot um, if you want to vote because it's, we're going to stuff the ballot box, make sure Ted's here. But anyway, so if, if you um, can't make it in this week anytime, and if Kim's not here, just put it in the mailbox. If you are voting, like from home or wherever, you do need to put your name on the uh, ballot to say, you know, Pastor Ted, yes, and your name. They will be, when you're here, we're not going to worry about it. So if you have any questions, um, please see me or you can call Kim and um, maybe she can help you. But uh, we hope to see a lot of you here next week so we can vote and get this done. Thank you. So one of the ministries that we support is um, one of our members, Minerva, runs for Neighbors of Hope in Adrian, and she asks us for Bibles, specific Bibles for the women and children and uh, teens in her ministry, as well as some blankets. So as we, always, we stepped up for that, but we wanted to take a moment to say a prayer of blessing over those. Let us pray. We we'll give you thanks, O oh God, for the ministries that you call us to and for those who have need to hear your word and to have warmth. We pray that you bless these blankets and the scriptures that accompany them, that they may minister to those who receive them. And all that you see that they need, even for what we've not asked, we lift up in Jesus' name. Amen. We rise for the confession. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, 
and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. And the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We sing our opening hymn. <clears throat> <clears throat> grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. 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 Let us pray. O God, rich in mercy, you look with compassion on this troubled world. Feed us with your grace and grant us the treasure that comes only from you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Our grace may be seated. <clears throat> I 
Our first reading this morning is from Amos. In this reading, the prophet Amos announces that Israel's great wealth is a cause not for rejoicing, but rather sorrow, because of God's people have forgotten how to share their wealth with the poor. The wealthy will be the first to go into exile when judgment comes. And now for the reading. Alas, for those who are at ease in Zion, and for those who feel secure on Mount Samaria, Alas, for those who lie on beds of ivory and lounge on their couches and eat lambs from the flock and calves from the stall, who sings idle songs to the sound of the harp and, like David, improvise on instruments of music, who drink wine from bowls and anoint themselves with the finest oils, but are not grieved over the ruin of Joseph. Therefore, they shall now be the first to go into exile, and the revelry of the loungers shall pass away. The word of the Lord. Please read with me responsively Psalm 146. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as Paul said of him. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in rulers, in mortals in whom there is no help. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God. Who may they have in the earth, the seas, and all that is in them, who keeps promises forever. Who gives justice to those who are oppressed, and food to those who hunger, the Lord sets the captive free. The Lord cares for the stranger. The Lord sustains the orphan and the widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah. Our second reading comes from 1 Timothy. And in this reading, Timothy is reminded of the confession he made at his baptism and of its implications for daily life. His priorities will be different from those of the people who merely want to be rich. And now the reading. Of course, there is great gain in godliness combined with contentment, for we brought nothing into the world so that we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by their senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, and in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. But as for you, man of God, shun all of this. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life for which you were called and for which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and of Christ Jesus, who is his testimony before Pontius Pilate, made the good confession. I charge you to keep the commandment without spot or blame until the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will bring about at the right time. He who is blessed and only sovereign the King of kings, the Lord of lords. It is he alone who has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. As for those who in the present age are rich, command them not to be haughty or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. They are to be good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future so that they may take hold of the life that really is life. The word of the Lord.
Gospel according to Luke, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said, There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen, and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and to the prophets, Neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Congregation may be seated. Can I have the children come forward at this time? (laughs) Got to get the good seats. Good morning. How's everybody? Good? So how many of you have an Apple Watch? You don't have an Apple Watch. Okay. How many of you have an alarm clock in your bedroom? Okay. Do you have something on your alarm clock called a snooze button? You don't? You do? What's the snooze button for? You just press the button. You don't use the alarm clock? Okay. The snooze button is a feature on your alarm clock or on your Apple Watch or on your iPhone that, like, you know, if the alarm goes off and you feel like, man, I could use 10 more minutes of sleep. So you push that snooze button and you go back to sleep for 10 more minutes, right? Pretty cool. And then 10 minutes comes up and it goes off again, and what do you do? Hit it again. (laughs) And you hit it again. (laughs) So you kind of get used to using that snooze button, which is... Really not a good thing, right? Because when the real alarm goes off and you got to get up and go to school, you might forget because you're so used to hitting that button and turning it off. Jesus told a story about a rich man and a poor man in the gospel, which I'll talk about in a few moments. And it was kind of like the rich man had a snooze button. He had this poor person that was right outside his castle and he walked right by him, he never helped him out. And then when they died... He went to a bad place, and the poor man went to a good place, and he realized it was too late. He kept hitting that snooze button instead of helping. So think about that next time you hit the snooze button. Let's pray. Thank you, God, that you are one who calls us to help others. Open our hearts and our eyes to those places where people are in need. For it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up, guys. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus, the living Christ. So when I was in college, one of my on-campus work-study jobs was working for the post office. And the first week I worked for the post office, my boss said, well, what you're going to be doing is taking a van around campus and delivering packages to the law school, to the seminary, to the nursing school, to the conservatory. Can you drive a stick? I said, sure, I can drive a stick. I learned on a Pinto. Okay. (laughs) Go get the van. It's around the back. 
It took me 20 minutes to drive that Volkswagen van around because the shift pattern is not the same. <laughs> it's different. That's what Germans did to us. <laughs> so I finally figured it out, and I drove it around, and he was just kind of smiling. He said, you've never driven a VW, have you? I said, nope, but i got to figure it out now. At first, I didn't think it had a reverse gear. I kept trying to find it, and I finally did after a sufficient amount of grinding. You wouldn't buy a car without reverse gear, would you? Even if the manufacturer were willing to knock off, say, $5,000, I'll take that off if you don't want reverse. <laughs> but a lot of people these days wouldn't think of buying a car without reverse, go through life without reverse. Marriages break up, friendships disintegrate, even churches fall apart simply because people are too proud or too stubborn to back up. We dig our feet in. We absolutely refuse to say things like, I was wrong, or I'm sorry, or it's my fault. We're unwilling to put it in reverse and undo the damage that we do to others. In today's Gospel from Luke, we have this strange story with a lot of reversals going on. The rich man is clothed in purple finery, and Lazarus is clothed in sores. The rich man looked down on Lazarus, and now he must look up to see him. Lazarus is carried by the angels to heaven, while the rich man is buried. And Lazarus had lay helpless at the man's gate, while ironically the main name Lazarus literally means helped by God. So Lazarus is named, and the rich man's name never happens in this account. Some traditions call him dives, which means rich. So in Jesus' story of the rich man and Lazarus, there's no wiggle room. Deeds are done and lives led, and there are consequences for each of these three characters, the rich man, Lazarus, and Father Abraham. And no matter what each of them wishes, desires, or hopes, the matter is finished. It turns out that the rich man, not having shared with Lazarus when he begged at the gate of his house, is stuck in hell, and he is thirsty. And Lazarus cannot reach over to him. And even in hell, he sees Lazarus as just a subject. Abraham, can you tell Lazarus to, to help me out here? Put his finger in water and help me out a little bit? And Abraham, not very impressed by the rich man in the first place, seems to just relish telling him off at the end. Nope, he says, there's a chasm between us that can't be passed. We are told that we reap what we sow, that what goes around comes around, and that's not easy news to hear. Sometimes it is painful news, and other times it seems a foregone conclusion. The rich man just doesn't get it. And it's not only that he messed up by not helping Lazarus while they were alive, but also he still does not listen to Moses and the prophets, who had a lot to say about justice and the poor and those in need. The rich man never used his reverse gear. Sometimes a biblical witness is tough to hear, and in this case, one person is rotting in hell, and the second is in the heavenly city, and the third is telling it like it is. But nothing changes even after death. Nothing changes. The rich man seems not to have practiced mercy in his relationships while he was alive. Why should we expect that he would suddenly catch on now, even in hell? And indeed, Jesus makes it clear that the rich man does not understand, even in hell. And there he asks for mercy, not forgiveness, but mercy. He asks for water, but not for life. The rich man does not seem to care for his own. He does seem to care for his own family. And again, that's that selfishness because he says to Father Abraham, well, if you can't help me, can you send someone to my brothers? I got five brothers and man, they need to avoid this mess I've gotten myself into. 
And it's not so much for the purpose of getting them to see the need to reverse direction as it is a warning to avoid their fate. And Father Abraham dismisses that as well. If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone rises from the dead. Wow, that's prophetic. The tragic flaw in all of this is that the rich man suffers from this deep spiritual deafness. He cannot hear and listen to the call for justice. He's unwilling to reverse his path. His heart is hardened. And we see the tragic flaw in the rich man and recognize maybe even our own inability or unwillingness to hear and listen to God's word as it finds its way to us. We see our own hardness of heart and we go through life without a reverse gear. That as Christians, we do have someone who has risen from the dead, Jesus Christ. And because he has risen, we get this chance to start over each and every day. That's what baptism is. We're named and claimed as children of God. And we get to start over every day and remember, as Riley will be marked this morning to keep our hearts open to hearing the cry for justice and mercy and bread. So because of Jesus, we get to use our reverse gear if we choose. A hundred years ago, there was a late night show on called David Letterman. And he's known for his top ten list. I always like listening to his list. To end with something a little lighter this morning, I share a list of the top ten things Christians should be saying to help you with your reverse gear. Number one, I'm sorry. There's plenty of hurt in the world, and even though we may not personally be responsible for all of it, it's amazing how far an apology will go. How can I help? Sometimes we have a bad habit of trying to fix things or listening only to get our opinion out. Sometimes we need to just stop and say, how can I help? I don't know. I don't know. If I get a catechism kid that comes to me with a question and I don't know, I'm not going to bluff. I'm going to say, I don't know. I'm going to have to go research that. That's a good question. I could be wrong. When we admit we don't have all the right answers, we create a space for dialogue and compassion and reconciliation. What do you think? Asking people their thoughts and their faith is a healthy practice for all of us. In fact, I learn more about my faith from non-Christians sometimes when I ask them, what do you think? I love you. We have the best of intentions when we tell others about God or Jesus, but unless there's a central theme in your life, talking about God loving you comes off a little weird unless you love them. Tell me more. That shows interest in what other people think. That just stinks. Sometimes that's the only answer we got. It just stinks. (laughs) Let's give it a try. As Paul says, our faith requires a childlike what's next. In the words of the church, in the seven deadly sins, we've always done it that way. (laughs) Or finally, say nothing at all. Christians are particularly guilty of whipping out all those cliches and then there's dead air. Sometimes it's just best to say nothing at all. Or as I began this sermon, Use your reverse gear. Amen.
Please follow along with the order for baptism. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized into the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Who presents his child for holy baptism? Called by the Holy Spirit and trusting in the grace of God and the love of God, do you desire to have your child baptized, baptized into Christ? If so, say we do. As you bring your child to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with her among God's faithful people, to bring her to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in her hands the Holy Scriptures, and to nurture her in faith and prayer so that your child may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ in word and deed, care for others and the world God made and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help your child grow in the Christian faith and life? If so say we do. Sponsors, do you promise to nurture this person in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit, to help her live in the covenant of baptism and a communion with the church? If so say we do. People of God, do you promise to support Riley and pray for her and her new life in Christ? If so say we do. We do. Congregation, please rise. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, say, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? If so, say, I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, say, I renounce them. We confess our faith together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seated. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. 
Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord and the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Riley and Martin, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through the water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughter and son's new birth. You raise us from sin and to eternal life. Sustain Riley with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Riley, child of God, you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ and to the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Amen. Okay, Riley, do you want to take a walk with me? Excellent. Please welcome with me the newest member of our Christian family, Riley Ann Martin. That was good, wasn't it? Okay, we'll go back to Mama Day. And we have a quilt that the women of our church made for Riley, and it has her baptismal date and her name on it. That's yours. And I'll give you this. You can blow out the candle. And return to your seats. rise as we continue with the prayers. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered into one body and bread, let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. O God, rich in mercy, fill your church with righteousness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Empower the baptized by your spirit to be rich in good works and ready to share. God of grace. Protect the earth and its creatures, O God. Provide water, food, shelter, favorable habitats, especially for endangered species. Preserve threatened ice caps, glaciers, parks, and beaches. God of grace. grace. Increase justice in the nations, local governments, and courtrooms. Guide lawyers and those who hold public office to act with compassion and discernment. God of grace. grace. Give food to the hungry. Set the captives free. Lift up those who are bowed down. Watch over the stranger. Tend to those who are ill, especially John, Carrie, Tom, Donna, Juliana, Linda, Lori, Bob, Dolores, Pastor Sarah, Laura, David, Rudy, Amy, David, Rod, Mary, and Alan, Alyssa, Dennis, Kara, Linda, Barb, Ryan, Melissa, St. Paul Lutheran Church in Temperance, Pastor Lou Carlson, and licensed lay minister Jim Poole. Our confirmation class, Aubrey Bauer, Braden Bauer, Claire Cousineau, Michael Longabar, Lamar Longabar, and Carson Benzing, and all those struggling with COVID-19 all over the world and the people of Ukraine. Stir us to act in the best interest of our neighbors, God of grace. Enliven our praise, O God. Inspire musicians and artists, poets, and all who create beauty in this place, God of grace. Enfold the saints who have died in the arms of your loving care. 
Grant that the holy angels accompany us and bring us to eternal life with them in the light of your presence, God of grace. Gathered together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. You may be seated for the offering. please rise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. The vines of the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We feast on God's meal of love for us together. May be seated. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Lord God, your mercy delights us and the world longs for your loving care. Hear the cries of everyone in need and turn our hearts to love our neighbors with the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Now may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. We sing our closing hymn. Peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning.